is Jay here. Welcome to Models and Memories Weekly, episode 45. Models and Memories is a show about nothing and it is filmed in front of a live studio audience. This is a show where I talk about my painting, modeling, and working experiences from the week. Now you might think to yourself, Jay, you put out three YouTube videos a week and you stream every single night. How? Could you possibly have more to say? Well, I do. And here goes. This week, we saw a couple of new models from Games Workshop, and it was some sort of interesting stuff. I think the boringest of the bunch was the Eldar, but that's usually, that's kind of been how it is for me, because I'm just not that big an Eldar fan. I think they're kind of cool, but uh, the new models have just been taking the old models and just bringing them up to the modern standards, whereas I think I would have liked something a little different, a little, a little changing things up. And I understand that that's not for everybody, because some people want the new models to be able to look good next to their old models. And if they radically change things, that wouldn't really be the case. You would kind of almost have to replace your old models with new models, and they didn't do that. I think what I would have really preferred is I would have preferred the Primarisification of Eldar. That would have been what I wanted. But uh, you can't always get what you want. Okay, Warlocks. I think the Warlocks look pretty dope. I think the old Warlocks actually didn't look too bad. I think they were some of the best of the old metal fine cast Eldar range, but the new ones definitely look great. They're about 300% more customizable because 100% uh, for being made of plastic, another 100% for having weapon options in the box, and then another probably 100% for being somewhat compatible with all of the other Eldar weapons from the range, which is kind of nice. I like the faces, I like the cloaks. Eldar is just a little bit boring. They did show off a little bit of concept art, and I think the concept art is a little bit more interesting than the models they ended up with. One of them has like a really, really nice um, fur, fur cape, which I think it looks dope. And if I were to ever get these models, I think I would try to recreate that, that furry cape. But overall, I think these models look good. I think they'll make a good addition to people's Eldar's armies, blah, blah, blah. I think they're cool. Whatever. The model I really want to talk about is a new model for everybody's favorite game, Adeptus Titanicus. I, have, I hear nothing but great things about this game. I hear nonstop publicity and talk about this. Uh, literally no one I've ever heard talk about this game. But they came out with a new Titan, which is kind of cool. We've gotten a couple of new Titans, and uh, I do like the Titans. They're one of my favorite things in 40k. I love it whenever they pop up in the novels, and I just think they're neat. They're just a really, really cool concept, and we got a new Scout Walker in the same vein as the um, Warlord Reaver. Are they just called Scout Titans? Warlord Reaver. Warhound. Warhound. Warlord Reaver. Warhound. So this is in the Warhound category of Titans. They're very, they're very small. They got two little legs, but uh, this model. It's fine, I think it's cool. It's a cool little model, it's got some weapon hard points, it's nice and stocky, it's got good, strong chicken legs. But one thing that kind of caught my attention was that this model is called the Direwolf. And there's another boxy, chicken-legged model called the Direwolf, and that is for the game Battletech. And... <sighs> The similarities, there are, the similarities are there. It's very interesting. I think I wouldn't, I wouldn't have batted an eye if it was just they look similar, because mechs can look similar. I mean, it also kind of looks like mechs from Mech Warrior, and it kind of looks like mechs from, uh, from that movie, the stop motion animation movie. Um, like, you know, chicken legs and guns on the side. It's not the most amazing concept in the world, but the fact that they share the same exact name is interesting. I don't really think any funny business happened. It's just an odd coincidence that uh, if you're t you you literally use the dire wolf from these games interchangeably, and uh, they would both have the same silhouettes and have the same structure and look. So I don't know if BattleTech needs to reach out to Games Workshop, or maybe Games Workshop has to send a cease and desist to BattleTech. You know, poor little Games Workshop versus the big dog battle tech. But I just thought it was kind of funny that the new Titans look very, very, very similar. I would, I would still, I'd really like to give uh, Adeptus Titanicus a try. It's, the problem is, it's a very expensive game. Which I feel like is a, the wrong move. Like, I feel like 40k and Age of Sigmar can kind of get away with being really expensive because they have such a history and such like a, 
there, you know, they're a whole thing. People play 40K, people have big armies, people want big armies, people want to play these big giant war games, and it's a little, it feels a little bit more of an investment. When you have a big 40K army, like you can play Apocalypse, you can loan models out to friends so that you can all play together. But with these boxed games that Games Workshop makes, I feel like the price has got to be more competitive and in line with other boxed games because that's the competition. Like, you know, like r normal, you know, boxed games, you know, Settlers of Catan is not really competition to Age of Sigmar. But I feel like Catan is competition to Adeptus Titanicus. But, uh, you know, having one, one Warlord Titan, that's not the biggest model ever made for like a hundred and, you know, some dollars. I guess it's like hundred fifty dollars. It's a, it's a tall ask, so I don't know. I mean, they're not going to lower the prices now, but, um... It's just, uh, if the prices had been a little bit more competitive, I think I would have given the game a try. And if anybody plays it, let me know in the comments below. Is it is it fun? Is it worth it? Is it cool? Because uh, it looks neat to me. Also this week, I was looking at my Crute models because I'm painting them live on stream and I've really been enjoying them. And even though I don't have that many, it feels like I'm getting pretty close to maybe having the, the bones of a new 40k army. One box of Crute is 16 models. And I also have some Crute Hounds, the Crute Guy from Blackstone Fortress, which is gonna be my leader. I think this is gonna be what I've been using as a shaper for the meantime, and the wonderful Crute Hox, which I actually do have a second Crute Hox I need to build up and paint. But I've really been thinking that this could be a really, really fun army. And I really want to put a challenge to myself where I want this force I want to actually kit bash and convert because I never, I never really do that. I enjoy kit bashing and converting and I do like kit bashing and converting with a lowercase c because I love my space marines and I'll give like one of them a death watch shoulder pad. Maybe I'll give another one a knife, you know, little, little kit bashes like that where it's still, it's still normal and I've just added a little something special to it. But I think with the Crute, especially since you can't really buy a lot of the Crute models, especially the old Forge World models that went out of stock like seven years ago, like the the Narlocks and the Crute Riders. I think it'd be really interesting to actually try to convert and kit bash those models. I was thinking maybe like find something to be a great Narlock and then maybe use the Mumok from Lord of the Rings, use its... Um, it's saddle and rider system. I'd like to I'd like to make these crutes kind of something cool. Maybe maybe use them either as what they are, crutes or make them into like a count as tau army where each each for each unit actually represents something in the tau codex. And Games Workshop actually put out an article that seems to maybe help me out here in that you can, in fact, now with the new Tau Codex field in all Crute Force, mostly just because you can now take a Crute Shaper as an HQ option. So I can, I can fulfill my HQ requirements and my troop requirements, and so I can technically, technically field a Crute army. Will it win me games? Almost certainly not. Although, I don't normally win games anyway. But I think it would be really, really cool. And I would like to give it a try, like, to really, it's, I, I always, I love it. Like, I, I used to live on Daka Daka forums and love reading people's 200 page work in progress where they're putting green stuff on a toy Triceratops and turning it into some awesome orc vehicle. And I always super, super loved that stuff. But then for my hobbying, I would just kind of, I would build the kit as the instructions say. But I think I would really like to kind of get out of my comfort zone and really go to town on something wild. And I think the Crutes are going to be an excellent opportunity to do that. Because I think, I mean, 16 models come to box. So if I buy one more box, I'll have over 30 Crutes. And I think even I'll have a few extras to sprinkle here and there on some of my vehicles. I would also love, love, love to one day get my hands on some Crute Riders and some great Narlocks, but... Uh, Boy, they get snatched up quick on eBay, but maybe one day if I keep my eyes peeled and I wish upon a star, I'll be able to obtain those kits. But the Crute, the Crute are one of those kits that has really, really stood up nicely. They they look good. I have, I've already begun a little bit of kit bashing and converting as I have replaced the heads 
with 3D printed heads from a creator called Felix the Crazy, who does a lot of crude related STLs. I love, I love the 3D printing space because you get a lot of, you, you find these wonderful artists who are very specific. I mean, we have a creator who specializes in count as crude upgrade parts. How great is that? And we see that all over the place with different little indie designers and creators creating these really, really niche products that are like the perfect little thing for what you need right now. It's super, super cool and super fun. And that's another thing that I would love to bring into this fledgling little Crute Carnivore army. I also really enjoy the Crute and Kill Team. That's really how this all started is I want a team of Crute for Kill Team and I've, I have them and I've played them. And you know what? They're not terrible. They have one really tough matchup, which is unfortunate because it's the matchup I keep finding myself in over and over and over again. Crew to have a really hard time killing Space Marines in Kill Team. A really hard time. Uh, it's not impossible. Close combat would be more likely, but uh, it is hard. Because the Crew are not going to be able to kill a Space Marine by shooting at them with their bolt gun equivalent weapons. And the only way to really hurt them in close combat would probably be to charge in with one, but not engage in a fight. Because if I engage in a fight with a Space Marine, I'll almost certainly lose and die. But if you can get multiple carnivores into combat at the same time, one of them is going to get a buff to their fighting, which means that they're gonna be hitting on two ups. And now all of a sudden, I have a much better chance of getting past the Space Marine's three up armor save. A better chance, not a guarantee by any means. But although the armor save doesn't matter in close combat, but it's still really, really tricky. But I have been enjoying the Crutes. They're a really, really fun race in 40k. One of the more unique to 40k, I would say. These uh, these bird, super tall bird lizards who change their biology by eating the meats of their victims. It's it's kind of fun. There's even some fun stories of the Kroot who were really impressed by their by their allies, the Tau, in combat, and so they're like, hey, you know, not for nothing, but can we eat some of these corpses because we're pretty impressed with you guys? And then the Tau are like. No, thank you. Please don't eat our dead. I just, I think the crude are fun. And that is what I've been working on this week. I'm getting really close to being done with the other remaining 10, and I'll have to buy another box and put another box of 16 crude together, which is super fun to do. I feel like I've been on a much more painting, enjoying painting than enjoying building kick lately. But I'm sure, I'm sure the tables will turn soon enough. But uh, it is fun, and I like the crudes. I think out of all the old models, they might be the best. I mean, they came out right around like Cadians, Orc Boys, uh, the original Space Marines. And I think they honestly hold up better than those models. And as in their uh, multi-part plastic kit way. And there's only, there's four bodies and four legs. And you just, you just swap them all out. And then the arms are paired with the guns. And it works out really, really, really nicely. The The box of Crute I bought, the instructions were literally drawn on the side of the box, which is great. The The modern, the more modern instructions are clearly better because things are actually designed in the 3D space. And so you can make these great renderings that show you exactly how things connect. But there is something really classic about somebody's ballpoint pen ink sketch of, uh, you know, arm A goes onto socket B. There is a lot of fun to be had. But that is what I worked on this week. I didn't get a ton of behind the scenes hobbying and painting for myself done because I was super, super busy working on stuff for Eons of Battle that you will see soon. But if you in general like what we do here and you want to see more, the best way to support us is by becoming a member of our Patreon. Over there, you're going to get access to some high quality grimdark terrain STLs. Super cool, and in addition to that, you're also gonna get to vote on what models I paint live here on YouTube, like I've been painting these Crutes, a live hobby hangout every Friday, and more exclusive contents. But if Patreon is not your thing, you can also support us by looking at our merch. Yes, we have merch. We got t-shirts and sweatshirts with some amazing Eons of Battle artwork on it, and it'd be super cool if you go check it out. But that is what I'm working on this week, so 